Hey everyone, it's Agwin from Scope of Life and Beyond Systems. Recently, one of you asked me if I could share my take on how to activate one's chi. Now, first of all, we have to say, what is chi? Chi is what the Chinese refer to as life force energy. Now, since I haven't talked about energy per se in that specific terms on my channel before, I decided it's a good time to take this question and start a very short series around the topic in this specific case really the activation of chi and how that can impact our health what is it in in general like what is chi and what can you do to boost this life force energy this vitality in yourself in this short series i'm also going to explain why the concept of such an energy is not just in concept but definitely something that is there just as manifest as our physical body that has influences um, that influences our physical body as well as our movement as well as our mind our emotions and vice versa so here is what i'm going to do first of all i'm going to give you a general overview of the topic so you get a basic idea of it in this video i'm trying to keep this video as short and concise as possible because of that i'm going to do a couple of more videos after this one um, to describe a little bit in more detail specific methods and also to talk much more in detail about this whole concept of an energy that maybe permeates us or that we interact with on a regular basis also for those of you who are not that interested in the energetic topic um, bear with me for a second maybe there are some things that do make sense for you and if not um, the other updates like the developmental movement series and so on those series they will progress they will continue on my channel as well so anyway i'm going to throw in another aspect that i haven't discussed so far but that is definitely part of our whole being all right Let's get started by taking a little bit of a closer look. What is qi? Um, as I mentioned before, the Chinese refer to it as life force energy. When we take a look around the globe, there are many different cultures, old cultures who described some sort of vital energy that our human body is either flooded with or in constant interaction with in terms of our surroundings and so on and so on. Throughout the different cultures, you'll find different names. In China, it's called Qi. In Japan, they call it Qi. In um, India, they talk about Prana, and so on and so on. And the, the Celts are talking about a little bit, uh, something a little bit different. Um, in Hawaii, again, this, this breath, life, energy is also a concept, and so on and so on. The main question here is, are all those different names really names for one and the same thing? If we talk umbrella term again, in terms of they all describe some sort of energy, so something that we cannot touch as physical as our human body, um, yes, they all describe the same thing. The real question is, how do those specific energies those frequencies, those vibrations, those, those different wavelengths affect us. Bear with me for a second so I can explain this concept a little further. Think about it like that. When you look at something, you are interacting with part of the electromagnetic spectrum that your eye, this specific sensory organ of your eye, can visually see and perceive. When on the other hand, you are in a completely dark room and you just stand in front of a radiator that's fixed on one side of the room rather than the other side of the room where there is no radiator or on the, on, on the complete, to create a complete contrast, there might be a small uh, block of ice. Now, if you are in this completely dark room, you can walk from one side to the other and you'll immediately notice there is a change in temperature. 
the radiator affects you in a warm, in what we define as warm way, and the ice block is something that you will perceive as cool. So, where I want to go with that, they are all frequencies, they are all specific wavelengths of energy, physical energy, that interact with our physical body. We perceive light with one organ and we perceive warmth or cold with other sensory organs. Why am I going into this? I'm going into this because when we talk about the activation of qi, there are a couple different methods to do so, specifically with what the Chinese understood with the term qi, which I will explain in a separate video more closely. Those different methods are you can use breathing to activate qi, you can use your intent, you can use your imagination, you can use physical movement, and you can use your consciousness. So those are five different things that you can immediately use in order to activate your chi. Some more subtle things like depending on what you eat and so on and so on, your energy levels will rise and drop as well. But that's already, that's a mixture of really a more subtle type of energy and a biochemical type of energy. But um, basically everything that we got in contact with has an energy spectrum that we can partially perceive by touching it, by seeing it, by smelling it, by feeling whether it's warm or cold, and so on and so on. And it also radiates a spectrum that's just a basic physical principle, the principle of a form radiator. It also stands in interaction with other frequencies that we as humans cannot perceive with our regular anatomical physical senses. The important thing to understand is the method to activate chi or to work with a specific type of energy is dependent on the interaction of that energy with the body. What do I mean by that? Let's jump back to the example that I brought up before regarding the light and the temperature. Now, if we want to perceive the lake even better, visually, then there is no point in trying to fix those sensory organs in our body that help us to detect warmth or cold. We need to fix something in our eyes or in the neurology between our eyes and our heads and so on if we want to see shapes sharp again, for instance. And on the other hand, if we have an impaired ability to perceive heat or cold, then it doesn't make a lot of sense to put on some glasses and try different lenses in the hopes that our sensory perception of hot and cold will improve. Same goes for energy, just on different frequency levels. As long as we are talking about qi, the five mentioned possibilities are some of the most potent ones to activate it. The methods, the specific movement methods, for instance, the specific breathing methods, the specific intentions or visualizations, etc., etc., they are dependent on what energy we want to work with. If we want to work with qi, we use things that the Chinese tradition developed, like Tai Chi, like Qigong, like meditation, like specific breathing patterns and body waves and so on and so on. If we want to work with other types of energy, we need a different set of physical approach, maybe something like yoga for prana. Yes, I'm implying that there is difference between the energy of prana and the energy of chi in terms of how it interacts with our physical body and that that difference also defines the way 
the physical way one can most perfectly work with that energy. I'm going to talk about those differences again in a separate video. So for now, and this video, just let it be said, there are different ways of activating energy in the human physical body, especially activation of chi. Although I wanna, I wanna throw in one more nugget here. When we talk about activation of chi, that term is, well, only vaguely true. Why? Is it that we need a key that we turn in the ignition in order to literally get this energy started? Um, yes and no. It's always there. The question is how well is our personal ability to interact with it? So what we are doing when we are talking about different ways of activating Qi is actually we are tuning the instrument, we are tuning our physical body to interact with our mind and our consciousness to interact with that energy in a specific way that helps it to move more freely and that helps to harmonize the interaction between that energy and the body which eventually, ideally, that's the whole purpose of methods that work with that concept, nourishes our body and helps to sustain our body. So that's just the first nuggets on the whole idea of activating chi or of activating energy in the body. I'm going to do more videos about that in the very near future. If you're interested in that topic, and you have any specific questions please leave them in the comment box below i'll make sure to include that in what video will come next and um, also if you're really interested in that click the subscribe button there's a lot to find on my channel about consciousness about movement about developmental movement biomechanics anatomy and so on and also about energy and how all those things actually interact and work with each other Thanks for watching, have a wonderful time and see you soon. Bye guys.